In Creo Parametric, you can create curves on surfaces in ISDX. Let's take a look at how to do that. Before we jump into the style feature, I want to point out that I have a regular sketch of an ellipse in my model. Let's go to the style feature and then I will edit definition to get back in there. And so for the first kind of curve on a surface that I'm going to create, let's go to the curve tool. You can get to that from the ribbon or by holding down the right mouse button. Here is the curve command from the right mouse button menu. And right now I'm set to creating a planar curve. If I want to create a curve on a surface, I can do it from this icon. Also, you can right mouse click and hold in order to change the type of curve to COS, which stands for curve on surface. Let's take a look at the dashboard. You can see that the references tab is in red because it wants to know what surface you want to create the curve on. And so when you click with the left mouse button, it is going to select that surface as the reference as well as create the first point. Now I'm just doing a bunch of left mouse clicks and you can see that because these are points on a surface, they are represented with a box uh, indicating that for the type of point. Let me hit the middle mouse button to complete that curve. Let's create a, another one. Right now we're back in the tool for creating a, another curve. Let's do a bunch of left mouse clicks and you can see how it's creating it. If I want to make a closed loop, I'm going to hold down the shift key and then pick the original point and you can see how it's made it into a loop. Let me hit the middle mouse button. Now for the next one, I want to point out that I have a few different services here. If I left click and left click and left click, you'll notice I'm not getting other additional points because this is actually a separate surface. When you're creating a curve on surface, it can only be on the same surface entity that was created. If you have a separate surface created within the style feature, you're not going to be able to create the curve across multiple different surfaces. Okay, so that's good for that one. Let's hit the check mark to complete the style tool for that. Besides creating a curve on surface from the curve tool, you can create curves on surfaces by dropping curves. So let's go to the drop curve command. And right now, if I go to my references, oh, I still had the previous curve selected. Let's remove that from the collector. First, I'm going to select some of the different entities from the ellipse sketch just by holding down the control key. Next, I have to specify what surface I want them located on. To do that, you can activate the surface collector either from the right mouse button or by clicking in either of the collectors on the reference tab or in the dashboard itself. Let's go to surface collector and I will pick this particular surface and you can see how the ellipse is projected onto that surface. If you go to the dashboard, you have a drop down list where you could do along a direction or normal to the surface. So here's normal to the surface and can't tell if it altered it a little bit. Yeah, it did. So you can see the difference between normal to surface and the along direction. And if you're doing it along a direction, you can change the reference that it is using. It is currently using the current active plane. Let's hit the check mark for that one. For the next one that I'm going to do, let me turn on my datum plane visibility for a moment. For the next curve on surface, First, I am going to create a planar curve and then drop that on a surface. Let me start out by holding down the right mouse button to set my active plane to this datum plane called right. Then I will create a new curve. I'll get to the command from the right mouse button menu. And for the references, let's turn this to a planar curve. And instead of having it right on the datum plane, I'm going to offset a distance. Let's try value of 600. That looks good. And let me then hold down the right mouse button to change to my active plane orientation. 
For this particular curve, let me just do a bunch of left mouse button clicks. And again, I can hold down the shift key if I want to turn that into a loop. Let me hit the check mark for that particular one. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And to unclutter the screen, I will go to the Operations Overflow menu and Preferences in order to turn off the display of the grid. Now I can take this particular curve, it's still selected, and choose Drop Curve. And then for the references, for the surfaces to place it on, I can pick this surface, and you can see a preview of the entity. And this surface, oops, let me hold down the Control key for multiple entities. And that way we are dropping the planar curve onto the style surfaces. Now I can hit the check mark. And you can see all the different entities that were created. It is cluttering up my screen. Let's hide some of these. You can select them from the style tree or select them in the graphics area and then use the hide button so that you no longer see them. And one big use of these different curves on surfaces are for defining parting lines between different components in your style feature. You can also use them for setting the outlines for other features like bulges or dimples or any other kind of aesthetic features that you're adding to your surfaces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.